Bible tells us in Psalm 103, and please pay attention as I discuss it now. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Give it to us, please. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. This is a very profound scripture. In presenting God, he's saying that there are benefits that God has. There are benefits. When you come to him, you come because you love him. But he's not just calling you to come and waste your time. There is a feast that has been prepared. Are we together now? He's calling you into a heavenly banquet. He's calling you to live your life, your old ways, into an experience that has benefits. Benefit number one, verse three. The Bible says, who forgiveth all thine iniquities this is the first presentation of god that we must bring to the nations the god who forgives the world will never come to your god until you present him as a god who forgives as an expression of his love the nations let me tell you the truth the average person across the globe they they have once you have become an adult in today's world you most likely have been full of stories that represent pain betrayal all sorts of things it is important that we present to the nation the god who loves and the god who forgives two scriptures number one Daniel chapter 9 and verse 9. In fact, we'll look at more than two scriptures. Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Jesus Christ, you are the Elyon of Israel. Jesus Christ, the Elyon of Israel. The Bible says, to the Lord our God, belonged mercies and forgiveness though we have rebelled against him that this God that we present to the nations even though the people he's calling were until their salvation experience rebels that this God who is calling them has forgiveness to offer unto them Acts chapter 13 and verse 8 Acts 13 and verse 8 did I get that right? Oh dear, I think I've lost something now. Psalm 130, let's look at Psalm 130, 1 to 8. Look at this profound scripture. Psalm 130, 1 to 8. Out of the depths I have cried unto thee, O Lord. Verse 2. It says, Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Verse 3. It says, if thou, O Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand but there is forgiveness with thee that thou mightest be feared reading to verse 8 I wait for the Lord my soul doth wait and in his word do I hope verse 6 it says my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning I say more than they that watch for the morning 7 let Israel hope in the Lord for with the Lord there is mercy and with him is plenteous redemption verse 8 and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities this is the first representation of God that the end time church must present to the nations the God who forgives Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 Paul puts it profoundly 1 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood he says the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace Apostle, are you saying no matter how far I've gone from God, deviated from the things of God, that there is hope for me when I come to him? This is the proposition of the end time church, that we are a place, a platform, an institution that must market and sell a God that loves men enough to forgive their sins. Jeremiah 31, I believe, and verse 3, is it? That I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with my loving kindness have i drawn you hallelujah for as long as we look at the world and point hands at them and continue to make them believe 
that there is no redemption for them then once we are done saying we tell them come they will never come they need the presentation of a god who loves them and forgives them not a god who condones sin but the lord who loves them beyond that condition and seeks to remedy that condition are we together that's why he sends jesus can i tell you a forgiving god is a god worth coming to let me repeat myself again a forgiving god is a god worth coming to because forgiveness is a scarce thing in our world men are designed for vengeance men are designed for all kinds of things in fact one of the one of the foundational propositions of witchcraft is revenge and vengeance by all means are we together now yeah so if someone steals something, you don't need to investigate who stole it. You just go and meet a herbalist and say, whoever stole this right now, let his stomach begin to swell or let something happen to him or whatever. Let him start shouting as a madman to confess. Do you think someone will want to leave that herbalist in this wicked world? No, they will stay with that herbalist and say, just to let you know they've stolen something. Can you help me and kill whoever has done so? We present to the world as an end time church, a forgiving God not a condoning god please do not misunderstand me not a condoning god but a forgiving god that we can come before the throne of grace anybody at all regardless what you have done and you see when it has to do with the subject of sin and iniquity the bible's conclusion according to romans 3 i believe verse 23 is that all have sinned all have sinned all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god all have sinned. in fact there is a version that says all have sinned by nature and in practice so whichever you cannot escape by nature in sin did my mother and for if for any reason you were born by somebody who did not sin in practice hallelujah I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart listen do you know how good this news is when you tell someone who believes He's been condemned, looking at his life. Your entire life is rotten, wasted. You are no good for yourself. Perhaps a child that he is not aware of how I've lived my life and what I have done. Even God, if he knows my case, you say you are different. And you tell him no. When Jesus hung upon that cross, it was love that kept him there. Not ignorance. It was not ignorance of your condition that made him to die. He was fully aware of the extent of your fall, yet he still died. Are we together? The world will only come to a God who forgives, not who condones. Teaching a God that condones everything is another kind of error. God is mighty. God is holy. God is great. But he's also loving ladies and gentlemen when you taste of the love of jesus fear dies permanently in your life are we together now fear dies in your life there are people who cannot serve god today they cannot serve god acceptably they cannot live for jesus today are we together now is the reason why the moment do you know that there are many people who come to jesus because it's like a bribery with their lives until they become blessed so their commitment in church and their commitment to Jesus is not because they are aware he loves them. It's out of fear. Now that my life does not have anything to show, if he decides to be angry with me, I'm in trouble. So let me just pamper him with praise and worship. Pamper him with my tithe and offering, hoping that I rise when I become like one of those men, the one who married, the one who bought yokes of oxen, or the one who has now bought real estate. I now officially divorce him and say, Thou Jesus, don't come around my life again. I am now a rich man. I do not need you. Let the poor and beggars continue with you. But there is God who forgives. 
there is God who forgives. He can forgive the sins of the fathers. The idolatry that we were all born into, he can forgive. I know that people were killed, he can forgive. I know that wrong covenants were done, he can forgive. I know that altars, missionaries were killed, but that God can forgive. And we are presenting to the world a God who forgives. That it is true that God can drive a man's sin. You were born by whatever means. You were born from a family. Your father or yourself may have lived your life anyhow. Let me tell you the truth. If it is the God of the Bible, he does not condone sin, but he's loving enough to forgive. He can forgive. He can forgive. If God were to count iniquity, the Bible says who shall stand, whether by nature or or by practice the conclusion is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God now you sell this kind of message to someone do you know that even great people think about their lives and they say I may have all this money I may have all these things remember my teaching on the rich young ruler the guy had everything the world could offer but he came to him and he said good master there is something I'm looking for that my money cannot buy it is called eternal life what must I do to inherit eternal life I know what I must do to be rich I know what I must do to be influential I am a rich young ruler but I do not know what I need to do to have eternal life when it has to do with eternal life it is a gift for the great it is a gift for the small it is a gift for the educated it is a gift for the uneducated it is for all men John 3 16 says for God so loved the world not just a group of people he gave his one only begotten son that whosoever this blessing is for whosoever who believes in him should not perish the bible says but have life eternal can i tell you i will never present a jesus that looks like he zipped his heart as far as forgiveness is concerned provided any man is alive on earth even if it is five minutes to the end of your days whoever you you are once your heart is sincere admitting your condition and confessing his lordship the bible says he's able to save savior he can move a mountain my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever the author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave by the grace of god in this ministry we have seen all kinds of people saved people who at the point where you saw them you would if you were to assess them you would say these ones even jesus will reject them but he received them and look how he's turned their lives today many of them serving the lord with power and grace when you know who jesus is and you know the kind of god the end time church should present to the world you will never look at anybody alive and conclude on them because you may be concluding on saul whereas the person you are concluding on because she's a prostitute because she's a drunkard god does not condone sin but ladies and gentlemen his heart is loving enough and in this end time before jesus comes can i tell you the gates of the church will be open and will receive strange kind of people and you will see the mighty men that will come out of those people some of the people who will come are people who have all their life been in witchcraft and idolatry but they will come and be fired and clean by the word of God and out of those people prophets will arise out of those people evangelists will arise and their witness will be stronger and some of them hear me it may be your children maybe your son who you do not even know where he is right now you don't know whether he's in Nigeria or whether he's abroad you've been pain wondering oh God can you save this child when you know this about the God who forgives there is nobody you cannot intercede for and then you are careful when you conclude on men because if God is not done with them then it is not done are we together the mountain of the Lord's house is open for all nations because and will receive of all nations coming to it because we are revealing a God who forgives yes sir he can forgive your grandfather killed people all his life but he can forgive 
sacrifice animals to idols he can forgive with incisions all around your body he can still forgive God does not condone but he can forgive he can abundantly pardon he can abundantly pardon let the nations hear this that the Jesus that we present is one who is seated on the throne of righteousness and justice but I want you to know that he's not only a lion he's a lamb and the Bible says worthy is the lamb that has been slain for us we are standing here today because we are beneficiaries of his forgiveness, his mercy. We are able to approach the throne of grace to find mercy and to find help even in time of need. Believers, hear me. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a message that the businessman is waiting for. There is a message that the president of a nation, after bribing for 10 years, is waiting for. When you tell them there is a God who can forgive. A family that has oppressed somebody for 20 years, and you still tell them, once your heart is broken. Listen to my message on mercy. God does not forgive rebels. Let me repeat. God does not forgive rebels there is a condition to receive forgiveness from God that condition is called brokenness and repentance once you are not broken and repentant forgiveness is not for you so let me balance it forgiveness is not a license to blackmail God and remain in your state forgiveness only answers to genuine brokenness and repentance Without brokenness and repentance, forgiveness is useless. This is not only true for God, it's also true for men. When you say, tell somebody, I forgive you, and the person is not broken and repentant, you only wasted your time. What you need to say is, I tolerate you, not I forgive you. Tolerance, I have taught you, is creating accommodation for an obvious limitation that will repeat itself again. Forgiveness, on the other hand, answers to genuine brokenness genuine brokenness a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise hallelujah but the first dimension of god that we must reveal to the nations as the end time church is the god who forgives please say the god who forgives one more time say the god who forgives number two very quickly